On the 7th of June 1951, a horrific war criminal was led out towards the gallows surrounded by American military policemen. He stood at the bottom of the execution structure and noticed a noose attached to the wooden gallows, but it would be a matter of minutes before the execution of Hans, Theodor Schmidt was carried out. At the end of the Second World War, the Allies had captured a number of German guards who had worked inside of the deadliest concentration camps, and because of this they were brought to prisons all across occupied lands. One of the deadliest sites was Buchenwald, and dozens of thousands of inmates succumbed to a horrific ordeal inside the barbed wire fences, and because of this a number of guards were being prosecuted by Allied courts. Hans Theodor Schmidt was a man who was the adjutant and assistant to the Commandant of Buchenwald, and he was a very senior member inside of the SS, and also an executioner. Join us today to look at the execution of the Hangman of Buchenwald, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Hans Schmidt was born on the 25th of December 1889 in Herxter, and his father was a builder and a business owner, and it would have been expected that Hans would have joined the family business. However, following schooling, he then joined up with the German army, and he served inside of the First World War, and at the end of the conflict he joined the Volunteer Corps, but from 1919 to 1920, he completed military service inside of the Reichswehr. This was a newly formed German army and armed forces, and this was limited to 100,000 soldiers by the Treaty of Versailles. But following this, he then took a job as a businessman, and travelled around various countries such as the Netherlands and Belgium. But around this time, like millions of people around Germany would, Hans Theodor Schmidt joined the Nazi party, and he was intrigued by the politics of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. Hitler promised to rebuild Germany following the shame of the First World War, and many believed that he would restore national pride. Schmidt also joined the SS, and he later switched to become a member of the Waffen-SS, the Armed Forces Battalions, but it was inside of the SS where Hans Schmidt made his name and reputation. He began to then seek work inside of the concentration camp systems as the Second World War broke out, and he became a member of the Death's Heads unit. To begin with, Schmidt served in the Hinzert camp from 1940 to 1941. This was a camp where political prisoners were housed, but there were many executed at the site, and it became a place where guards were notorious here for their brutality. But then in November 1941, Schmidt was transferred to the Buchenwald concentration camp. It was here where he rose throughout the ranks of the SS, and the command structure inside the camp, and he eventually rose to become the adjutant and assistant to the camp's commandant. Buchenwald as a concentration camp and imprisonment centre opened years before the Second World War, and to begin with it would hold 8,000 prisoners, but it would then grow to a huge extent. The camp was staffed by the SS, with the first commandant, Carl Otto Koch, being actually executed inside of his own camp, as he was sentenced to death for disgracing the SS, and would be shot by a firing squad a week before the Americans liberated the camp. Other evil guards included his wife, Ilse Koch, and other women who regularly administered beatings, and even took lives through hangings and shootings. One guard, Walter Sommer, was also known as an executioner and a hangman, and he even crucified two priests upside down inside of the nearby forest, where many were executed. The forest nearby became known as the Singing Forest, for the screams that would be heard as prisoners were tortured there. The thing about Buchenwald was the sheer size of the complex, there were 136 subcamps that served the main site, and it was a place used for armaments production, making weapons and other vital military equipment for the war effort. But as mentioned, Buchenwald was a site where the conditions were truly hellish, as prisoners were kept starved, and they were forced to conduct hard labour. There were many illnesses and diseases that swept throughout the site, and as the inmates were too weak and suffering, diseases claimed a lot of lives too. There was also an extermination through labour policy, as the prisoners had to choose between conducting the work and having a small chance of survival or execution for not working hard enough. There was also human experimentation used at the camp, and further executions were carried out upon Soviet prisoners of war, who were slaughtered inside of the Gnik Schussen Lager, the next shooting facility. It was said that 56,545 prisoners died at Buchenwald, but as the war turned against the Germans following the Normandy landings, there would be some hope for the prisoners. Many of the inmates were evacuated on death marches and transports to other camps, 
and then the SS would execute and shoot anyone who could not keep up. But as the assistant to the camp commander, Schmidt, who rose to the rank of Hauptsturmführer, was serving initially Carlotto Koch, the corrupt commandant whose wife Ilsa would become notorious for her evil actions too. It was his job to advise Koch, who spent huge sums of stolen money to expand Buchenwald into a huge site, but also to make infrastructure, which would only benefit he and his wife. But Carlotto Koch would later be fired and sacked for his embezzlement and rough treatment of inmates, and he was at the end of the Second World War executed. But Schmidt remained, and he served the new commandant, Hermann Pistar. He remained in this position until Buchenwald was liberated, and because of this he was considered a major cog in the deadly operations of the camp, and the horrors that occurred there. But at the end of the Second World War in May 1945, Hans Theodor Schmidt was taken into custody by the US Army, and he was then brought to a war crimes trial. He was a defendant in the Buchenwald trials, which formed part of the bigger Dachau trials, and there were 30 other defendants alongside him, including Hermann Pistar, and for his crimes that occurred at the camp, and the fact Schmidt was given responsibility for overseeing the executions and directing these at Buchenwald, he was sentenced to death. The death sentence was confirmed for Schmidt, as at the time there were a number of condemned guards who had their sentences changed from imprisonment instead of execution, but as he represented the commandant in his absence, and assumed the role in charge of the camp, he would be executed. It was said, he was responsible for all the executions of camp inmates. Among them were several hundreds of prisoners of war, who were killed by a special unit, the so-called Command 99. These executions took place in a former horse stable, which was intended to give the appearance of a hospital pharmacy. When the unsuspecting victims were placed against a wall, apparently to measure their height, they were shot in the back of the head, with a powerful air pistol hidden in the wall. Sometimes up to 30 victims were killed in this way at once. Other executions supervised by Schmidt took place in the camp crematorium. The victims were hung from wall hooks and slowly strangled to death. I can find no reason for mercy in this case. On the 7th of June 1951, Hans Theodor Schmidt was told his execution would be performed imminently, and he was led from his prison cell into the Landsberg prison's courtyard. There was a large gallows that stood there, and Schmidt's identity was confirmed before he was led up to the execution structure step by step. On top of the gallows he was handed over to the executioner, and he then placed a noose and black cap over his head. A priest had been accompanying him to provide spiritual guidance in his final moments, However, Schmidt, once all the final checks had been done, was sent crashing through the trap door to his death. He was the man who was responsible for executions inside of Buchenwald concentration camp, and for his actions he was sentenced to death. Inside of Landsberg prison alongside many other Nazi war criminals, he was left for a number of years to ponder his fate and impending execution. But Hans Theodor Schmidt would write of his death sentence, I declare that I have done nothing other than what you gentlemen are doing right now. I carried out orders that were lawfully given to me. I'm leaving as the last of the Landsberg death row inmates. I die innocent. However, for his actions, he is remembered as a horrific war criminal of World War II. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.